okay when you want you're trying to record yes yes okay Feel free to start if you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much for being here. So first of all, I will recall some um, important or key concepts in the uh, control theory that I started last uh, day. Uh, and we are going to use these concepts for partial differential equations. So uh, the ideas behind uh, the curves are the following. We have um, linear ordinary differential equations. So here I am acting by means of B U to control the system, let's say that the, the solution of uh, this equation goes freely if I don't have this term and I can modify or I will try to modify the behavior of the solution I acting by means of U that enters in the equation with this matrix B, okay? So uh, we say that system is exactly controllable at time T if for any initial data and any final data, we obtain a control U. In particular, I want the control to be in L2 of zero T to RM and we obtain that the solution at time capital T is equal to X1. So um, we uh, saw last uh, session that this uh, exact controllability problem is related to the adjoint system, so the adjoint system have uh, three characteristics. It's backwards in time, the uh, initial datum is at capital T, and here we have the adjoint matrix to A, okay? So we prove that the system, the original system, so the one we want to control, so this system is exactly controllable if and only if the uh, adjoint system is B star observable. What does that mean? That it exists a constant positive constant such that I can bound B star of phi square. So the norm square of B star of phi in L2 of zero T is bounded from below by C times the uh, square of the final data, because recall that we have minus phi point equal to A star of phi, and phi of tau of t is phi t. So I am looking for the solution to this adjoint system, but when a uh, t time has uh, passed. 
okay? Because we are started here and we are going to zero, okay? In the case of the ODEs, this is equivalent to having this other observability inequality that from the left, we have the same term, okay? That is this one, but we can put on the right hand side precisely the initial datum of the equation. But this is because we are in a reversible case. In fact, it's not only in the case of the uh, ODE case, but it is because we have a reversible equation. I can go from T to zero and from zero to T and everything is good, fine, defined, okay? Everything is good. Also, we saw that in this situation, okay, we cannot translate this to every situation when we work with partial differential equations, is that the observability inequality in this situation is equivalent to a unique continuation result. That means that B star of phi t, phi of t equal to zero all along the time implies that the initial data is zero. So we are going to have the observability inequality. So in this case, both inequalities, if this is equal to zero implies phi of t equal to zero. Of course, if I have the inequality, this is always true, but also we have that the unique continuation property, so B start of phi equal to zero implies phi of phi, the initial data equal to zero, implies that the observability inequality is true. And this holds because we are in finite dimensional. setting, okay, and here this condition, the unique continuation implies that B star of phi square from zero to T to one half is a norm. To whom is a norm? I can define a norm for the initial data to be exactly that. And in this space, because we are in a finite dimensional setting, all the norms are equivalent. And in Rn, norms are equivalent, okay? So we are going to see that this situation is no longer true when we go to the partial differential equations. So I will start with um, uh, an easy situation. So I, I will start with the transport equation, but to do that, I will recall some um, spaces, linear spaces, where the solutions take place. So I recall that L2 of omega with omega and open and measurable set is the set of all functions that are square integr integrable and we take uh, equivalent classes to say that two functions belong to the same uh, equivalent class if they differ only in a set of measures zero and then taking when i talk about f in l2 in fact i am talking about class, an equivalent class, a class of equivalence, okay, in L2, 
And I can define a norm in this uh, space and the norm is just this one, okay? In fact, this norm is, uh, uh, comes from an inner product. So we are in the real setting. So I can define an inner product of, as F G equal to the integral from F G dx. Okay, here we are with the Lebesgue measure and uh, we have a Hilbert space. So that means that we have a complete linear norm of the space, which norm uh, is, uh, comes from an in, inner product, okay? Associated with L2, I'm not going to explain all the Sobolev spaces, but at least in one situation, it is easy to uh, obtain the, 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 the space, the space that, that is H10. So we consider a subset of L2 of omega, where, uh, how can you define all the, all the things? So, you take functions of class C1 with compact support and you can define there a norm for every function F in this set. You can define uh, this norm to the square, okay? And uh, you can obtain H10 just completing this space, okay? Uh, in general, you have a much more complicated definition for Sobolev spaces, so uh, I'm not to talk about uh, this. I, I hope you know uh, all Sobolev spaces. If you don't know Sobolev spaces, please, Consider for the moment that we are taking this uh, uh, norm. Um, and uh, so you have functions that in some sense have the functions belong to L2 and the gra gradient of the function belongs also to L2. But okay, so the gradient is taken in the sense of distributions, but if you don't know what it is, please, just consider that you are taking this norm and that you are working in a complete space, okay? So I'm going to work there. So the first example for contract problems that I'm going to talk about is a transport equation. So transport equation is used in several settings. It's a, it's a very used toy model for traffic in a city. And also it's a, a model for uh, like at these transport bands in the airports or uh, in, in, um, in a, a, a production situation, okay? So here uh, the, the transport equation is, um, partial differential equation. So here, y t is the derivative of y with respect to two, to t, y x is the derivative of y with respect to x. And uh, the transport equation is described like this. So you have, you have uh, an equation that is order one. So you need one uh, condition at uh, we are in the interval zero L. So I need a boundary condition here. And we are in um, for T in zero T, I need an initial condition also 
in zero, okay? So we can consider this equation with initial data uh, y zero in L2 and uh, a boundary dat datum u in L2 of zero t, okay? So again, we may ask is if the system is controllable or not in some sense. So here, uh, we are going to define the exact controllability in the same way I define it for an ODE. That is, I want for any datum Y0 in L2 and every five, so this one is an initial datum, okay? And for every, uh, final datum y1 in l2 i ask if it exists a control such a way that the corresponding solution to my tra transport equation so here is a transport equation so i, I ask if there exists u such that y at t x is equal to y1 of x, okay? So in fact, the points that are solution of this equation are functions, okay? And in some sense is a distribution of uh, material of the one that is transported along this uh, 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 transport, <laughs> Uh, band in the airport, for example, if is the lo luggage is uh, here and here you have a big one and you have another one. So the distribution of this luggage in the band is the function. So you can imagine this moving to the uh, right. Okay. So this luggage is moving. So I want to ask is at a point if I have this empty, for example. So that means that this function is zero, okay? So if you imagine uh, this transport band at the airport where you have your luggage, uh, even if they put all the things there, you have to wait some time if you are in the, in the, in the extreme right of the band, you have to wait some time on, until your luggage arrives to you, okay? So you have to wait some time. And uh, this is described by the, this theorem that says that the system is controllable at time capital T, but if and only if, I have enough time, okay? Uh, here, okay, the, 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 how do you say? Okay, we have, uh, you need the time to be longer than L, the, uh, the length of my interval in X. So here is the variable X. So if I put the time, so the time has to be larger than the uh, L of the space, okay? So to need more time than the length of my band. That, that means that in this situation, you have exact controllability, okay? So, I'm going to prove you, okay, the, 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 the bad result, so the, the need that T has to be longer than L, I, I'm going to just to show it. And I'm going to give several proofs to this uh, exact controllability, just to illustrate the techniques that we use in the control of 
partial differential equations. So I am going to work with this transport equation to illustrate some of the tools used in the uh, partial uh, differential equations control theory. So the first one is I'm going to use the explicit solution of the equation and then to show that it is not controllable if the length of the time is less than the length of the position interval because you can compute directly the solution and the solution is given in this way. So the solution is the initial datum evaluated at x minus t for t less or equal than x and the solution is given by the boundary da data if x is less than t, okay? So this, you can work with this, they're taking derivatives and to see that this y solves my equation, okay? So this can be done by hand, okay? Also, I'm going to prove uh, this result using a method that is called extension method that is used sometimes when we try to do some kind of uh, controllability. And I'm going to give again a duality argument that is related with the adjoint system. And I am using again the observability of the adjoint system as I did in the case of ODEs. So uh, these are the um, proofs I, I'm going to give you, okay? So the need of T being greater than L. So Take, for example, an initial datum that is one all the time, okay? All along the, the length of my band. And my objective to be y1 equal to zero, okay? So if I compute the solution, I know that um, the solution is given by the initial data at x evaluated at x minus t for t is smaller than x, okay? So that means that if capital T is less than L, Okay, the solution at time capital T is going to be one all the time. Okay, because we are going to be in the setting that L is larger than T. So we are going to be in this situation. So in particular, we are not having, because you doesn't appear here in the solution. So as you remember, the solution is given in two parts. So the influence of U is not uh, noticed in the solution as soon as we have a, a T smaller than X, okay? So you need to wait some time until the effect of this control appears in the solution. So we need absolutely T to be larger than L. Okay, so 
we're going to see, and this is not true every time. So this is particular for the transport equation. So I will show that this system is controllable exactly if and only if is controllable to zero. So I am saying that if I have y1 here and I can drive u0 to y1, if and only if, so here I have a u, if and only if I can drive y0 to zero, okay? And here I have another control, okay? So in fact, if the system is exactly controllable, I can go to zero because y1 equal to zero is a particular choice that I can do. But in general, not for every equation, it is true that going to zero is equivalent to exact controllability. So this is a particularity of the transport equation or of the wave equation, of course, linear uh, situation of these equations. But uh, for the transport equation, this is true. So I'm going to show that because it's not trivial, okay? This equation is not reversible. So if you put the solution at, uh, you do a change of variables, for example, if you do uh, y hat of t equal to y of capital T, so the equation is modified, but we have a sign minus in front of minus uh, the time derivative, okay? So this equation is not reversible. They are not identical when you perform this kind of change of variables. So you need to prove uh, this exact controllability equivalent to null controllability constructing uh, the proof, okay? So I need to prove that if the system is null controllable, it is exactly controllable. So what I'm going to do is given an objective, so y1 is my target, I want y of capital T to be equal to y1. What I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to construct an initial datum, a control at the boundary, and a solution to this equation that satisfies y of capital T equal to y1. So, but I am constructing the initial datum and the control, okay? So the fact here is that you are putting the initial datum because I, if I construct only the control, you may say, okay, you are driving y0 to y1. No, I am constructing the initial datum and a control. And so I am constructing a solution that goes from y0 bar to y1, but uh, by means, but this is constructed. This is not given. So I am constructing this initial datum and a control, okay? How can I do that? Okay, I am taking 
a solution that has as initial datum, my target, but evaluated and at L minus X. Okay, so I have this initial datum and I take a solution of the transport equation. I don't put a control here. I am not acting in the boundary and just let Z to evolve. I put this initial datum, okay? And then I will define Y bar to be the solution of this equation, but evaluated at capital T minus T. So I have that here and evaluated at L minus X. So I have that, okay? So this is my Y bar, okay? So the initial datum that solves Y bar is going to be Z at capital T evaluated at L minus X. That is the initial datum for this Y bar. And also what happens at y bar at x equal to zero. So we are in the interval zero L. When I put y bar at t zero, I obtain z bar at t minus t times L, okay? That's what I have. So in the boundary, we have that this U bar that satisfies that, okay? What happens with Y bar at uh, capital uh, T? So Y bar at capital T X is equal to z at where zero, okay? But I have to evaluate y bar at L minus z uh, is equal to z evaluated at L minus x. So it, it is y1 L minus L minus X, so it is this one minus X, and this one is Y1 at X, okay? So this Y bar solves the transport equation because I have put Z at T minus T and at L minus X. So I will have, when I take these derivatives, a minus, when I take the derivative with respect to T and a minus when I take the derivative with respect to X. So Y bar, no, I, I didn't write it here. So what I have is Y bar sub X plus Y bar sub T plus Y bar sub X is equal to minus Z of T at T minus T X L minus X minus set x at t minus t l minus x and this is equal to zero okay so my y bar is going to solve is going to solve my 
transport equation at zero, so y bar at t zero is equal to my u bar and y bar at uh, zero x is some y zero bar. And we have that, okay? So now what we can do is take the solution that starts at this initial datum, that is the original one minus the one I just constructed. And I know that the system, so that means that any initial datum can be driven to zero. So we, we know that there is an control u hat that drives my solution that starts from this point to zero. That was our assumption, okay? That the system is null controllable. And now we define a new control that is u, that is u bar that came from this system, okay, plus u hat that is given by the null controllability of the transport equation. And I add both solutions. And here we have precisely the controllability to y1. Why? Because y given in this way is going to satisfy my transport equation, okay? Y at L equal to zero is just this new control and Y at time T equal to zero is Y zero. So this is my original problem because I am starting, uh, starting at y0 and we have that y at t is y bar at capital T plus y hat at capital T. This one is zero, okay? So, I get that Y at capital T is precisely Y1 at X. So here is the equivalence in this situation of the non-controllability to exact controllability. So I'm going to use this equivalence to show that my equation is um, null controllable, controllable to zero, okay? Okay, what I am going to do is first prove this result by using what is called an extension method. So what I'm doing here is you have your interval zero L and what I'm going to do is to extend this, take an extension to R, okay, to, um, to R. So I am extending my, my, uh, my solution to, uh, not my solution, all the equation to R, okay? And I am considering 
the solution in R, so I am taking the solution in R, okay, uh, with a particular initial datum. Which one is this? So the initial datum that is Y0 here, okay, so is the uh, initial datum that I want to control. So here is Y0. And uh, I am putting a zero here, okay? So here is my Y zero. I don't know the function that it is, but outside my interval zero L, I put zero everywhere, okay? So if I restrict my solution to zero L, okay, in this case. So I will take Y bar is, okay, Y, no, Y bar is the solution in all these uh, corresponding to this initial data, okay? So now, I will define y to be the solution restricted to zero L, okay? But this solution y bar is the solution in R, in, in the uh, extended domain, okay? So I put zero L and I, I extend the domain. I consider an initial data that takes exactly the value uh, of the initial datum in zero L and zero outside this interval, okay? And I can uh, estimate this solution of the the solution of the transport equation in whole uh, R, okay? And then I restrict to the interval zero L. So I will have a solution that is zero if I am uh, in X less than L, you can compute the solution and, and you have that. But, so uh, since you are restricting your solution, you have some value at this point. And at this point, we say, okay, this is the solution that is defined in all the real numbers the real line, and this is my control. So I can take their U. So this one is the extension method. So in general, you can use this kind of solutions when, for example, and maybe on Friday, I'm going to talk about this kind of problems. So sometimes, your domain is this omega, so the blue part, okay? And you want to control, to put a control on the boundary, on the small boundary here, okay? And you, you, the theory of the, the, the things you can do, you can work, for example, in, uh, you know, results of controllability, with uh, putting the control in an inner domain, okay? So you can do this kind of argument, so an, an extension argument saying, okay, I want to control an equation so in general, I can't control an equation with a control on the boundary, 
but I don't know how to do that. Okay. I but I know how to control with an an internal uh, control. Well, what I do is to create a new domain artificially. So I extend my domain. I put like no uh, something uh, added to my domain in a regular way so you can compute uh, everything and you say okay i can work in omega prime so that is this extended domain since i know that i can control with inter inner domains with in your support of the control i can control with this small uh, omega but in the new domain omega prime and then i am controlling this equation in the extended domain and then i restrict the solution let's say that is y i restrict my solution y bar to omega for example times zero t then I'm going to obtain a solution. So my partial differential equation. So this is y is going to be zero, for example. And then I will get a control that is y is equal to what plus to y bar restricted to this gamma. Okay. In the rest, for example, the solution is zero. So this kind of argument is used for other equations, not just for the transport equation. But for the transport equation is much more easy. That is why I put it, because you have all explicit. Okay? So now I'm going to talk about the duality argument. Okay? So again, we concentrated on the null controllability. I just uh, show that uh, the transport equation, okay, is uh, exactly controllable if and only if it is null controllable. But also, and this is happens to 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 every exact controllable uh, equation if i can control from zero maybe i can control if if it is possible okay so now i am taking a new uh, transport equation with initial datum zero okay so I have y t plus y x equal to zero, and I put y equal to u. So this is um, at uh, x equal to zero. Sorry. So I have uh, y of t zero equal to u of t. So given a u of t in L2 of zero t, and here I have zero, so I am starting at zero. So I will define a function that is f of t, a functional, in fact, that to every control, so I am taking a control here, so I define f of t in such a way to every control or every function u, I put y of capital T x. Okay, 
So this function now is going from L2 of zero T, here is U of T, to LT of zero L, so here is Y of T, X. But always I am starting from zero, okay? So that, that is the way I am defining this uh, function, okay? Well, so what I am going to show is that the transport equation is exactly controllable at the time t, if and only if this function is surjective, okay? If I can reach all the state in L2 of zero L. So that is precisely the definition of exact controllability, okay? If I am starting from zero, I can reach any state, but here I don't have to prove that this is equivalent to exact controllability because this equation is linear. So if I can go from zero to any state, I just compute the solution that starts to y0 go to this state and just uh, take an, uh, um, an, a new control that is uh, the, the sum of these two uh, solutions, okay? So you can do it easily because it's linear. So this is not a, as before that I have to prove a solution that goes, uh, that is much more complicated. In this case, this is because the system is linear, okay? So uh, what we need to see is that this is surjective. So there is this uh, result from functional analysis and we are in this uh, seminar that is uh, analysis from the South, okay? So this is a result in, in functional analysis that says that if we have a functional between two uh, Hilbert spaces that is linear and continuous, okay? Then this map is surjective if and only if it exists a constant such that the adjoint, so remember the adjoint for the ordinary differential equation. So here we also have a definition of adjoint. So the adjoint evaluated of X2 in H1 is greater or equal than C times the norm of X2 in H2. So what, okay, so recall, what is the definition of the adjoint? So I have F from H1 to H2. So both are Hilbert spaces. So we have inner products, okay? So we have an inner product here, uh, x1, y1, h1, that is the inner product in h1. I have an inner product in h2, okay? And now I have a, a, a mapping f from H1 to H2 and is linear, okay? And continuous, okay? So I have F of X1 belongs to H2, okay? So I can do the inner product 
which y2 in h2, okay. And okay, how can I define the adjoint? Well, the adjoint is going to be defined F star is going to be defined from H2 to H1, okay? And what does, do, does it do? It is equal to X1, but I put here, remember what I do with the matrices. F star of Y2, and here is the inner product in H1, okay? So that is the definition of the adjoint. Okay, you have to change the domains, all that, but I'm not going to enter to that. So this is the definition of the adjoint. So what I am saying is that a functional is going from one Hilbert space to another one is surjective. If and only if I can bound the adjoint evaluated at X2, but this belongs to H1, okay, is bounded below by C times the norm of X2 in H2, okay? So what we need to do is to uh, see what is the adjoint of this function. Well, it seems that, okay, it, it happens that uh, you can, uh, estimate the adjoint uh, to uh, the one, the definition of F uh, here, okay? Just taking the adjoint equation, okay? So this one is the adjoint equation to yt, plus y x equal to zero. Uh, y of t zero equal to something and y of uh, zero x equal to y zero. Maybe zero, no, no, the, the, the thing is the structure of the system. Observe that here Z is evaluated not in zero, but in L. So the boundary conditions are in L. And we have, this is a backward equation because you have that Z of capital T is given by ZT, okay? So this is the adjoint system to my transport equation. And again, you can do that in the same way as you did before. I can estimate this adjoint equation. How can you do that? just multiply by Z this equation, okay? And see what has to, uh, uh, by the definition using the inner products in uh, L2, okay? So you can see that the adjoint to my mapping is just to evaluate Z at x equal to zero. Here is x, okay? So this is the adjoint to my mapping, okay? 
So how can we prove that? So it's just multiplying and uh, using uh, integrating by parts, okay? So I had my transport equation, y in y, so this is yt plus yx equal to zero, so we have that. I multiply by z, I integrate by parts, so this is integration by parts in, in, in time, and this term is integration by parts in space, and I will have y of capital T, zt here. I will have, remember that I was starting in y dot equal to zero. So I don't have evaluation in t equal to zero. And I have uh, the boundary terms, okay? So here I have in zero and at L. But remember that Z at capital L was equal to zero, okay? So I don't have terms in L, so I, I just have these two terms. And this was my definition of F sub T of U. So just Y of T. So what I have is F, capital F sub T of U times Z of Z T is equal to U of T C T at zero, okay? Because we have this equal to zero. So that means, so you need to, to uh, transform an inner product in another inner product, okay? So I have that the, no, I'm not writing this. I have F T of U times Z T where in the inner product in L2 of zero L is equal to U Z T zero where in L2 of zero T. That is precisely the definition of the adjoint. So here you are estimated this adjoint. Okay, so my result is that the uh, the mapping, the system is controllable if and only the mapping is surjective. And to be surjective is to say that this is bounded from below by the norm of uh, the, this term in L2. Okay, because this is the image of ZT is precisely Z evaluated and T zero. So the surjectivity of FT is obtaining this. Uh, I put C squared to say that it is strictly positive, no? Because it's positive. But obtaining a constant in such a way that we have this estimate, okay? So this is Z, okay? And this is what? This is F start of ZT. So I am taking the norm uh, to the square in L2 of zero T. I want to show that it is 
bounded from below by the norm of CT square, where in L2 of zero L. Okay? So this is the equivalent of my observability inequality in the ODE case. Okay, now we know that transport equation is exactly controllable if the time is larger than the length of the interval. But another way of proving it is then to prove or try to prove this uh, observability inequality. So let's do it. How can we prove uh, this observability inequality? Well, we can see that we are in the case T larger than L because it's when we know that we can control because if T is less than L, we know that we cannot control. We don't have controllability in this case, okay? So we are in the situation when T, T is larger than L. So in this situation, we have that um, Z at X equal to zero, is precisely Z capital T at T minus T. And therefore we have that these two things are equal. And then we have the observability inequality. So this is because we have the explicit uh, solution of the transport equation. But in general, we don't have this explicit solution. So again, I am trying to show you some techniques that are used in, used in the control of partial differential equations. So I want to prove this inequality by using what we know as the technique know as multipliers, okay? So, First of all, if I multiply my adjoint equation, so we are working all the time now with the adjoint, okay, to my uh, control. I want to prove the observability inequality. So I am going to multiply by Z all the equation. So I have Z C T plus Z Z X, okay. And uh, you can see that um, here it's equal to one half of the derivative with respect to t of z square. And this term is one half of the derivative with respect to x of z square. Okay, so I can add these two and integrate from zero to l. What I get is that z at l is equal to zero. So I obtain this equality. So I just get here, I have only the evaluation in zero, okay? So I get that the der derivative with respect to time of this uh, 
square norm of z with respect to x is equal to z evaluate at zero square. Then I will define the energy at time capital T to be this integral. So is this one, okay? Okay, so now I will multiply my, my adjoint equation. I have that, I have Z at LX equal to zero and Z at, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here is L and I have, have T and at capital T, X equal to ZT, okay? I am multiplying this by a multiplier. Now I, it's not Z alone, not only the solution, but X times the solution, okay? So this is my multiplier. In fact, X is my multiplier. Okay, and we obtain this equality again because we have again x z z t. I have x z z x. Here is one half of the derivative with respect to x of c square and here x don't do not depend on on t so it's the same of x c square i integrate from 0 to l and i obtain that equal to 0 okay again i have uh, I have this term, x times the derivative with respect to x. So I'm going to integrate this term by parts, okay? So the first one is the same. And then when I integrate by parts, I obtain that plus the boundary terms, but x at zero is zero and z at l is zero, so I don't have boundary terms. So what does that mean? That means that if I take, remember that I define the energy at capital T is this integral from zero to l of z squared dx, okay? So this is the energy at capital T. So I can integrate this equality, okay? And I get that the integral from zero to T of the energy is equal to that. Just evaluated this integral, okay? And then what I, I get is that this one, is least less or equal than x time z of tx square dx and this is exactly l times the energy at capital t again you have that you you can estimate your energy and you can see that this is less that the energy minus z the square is less that the energy at, at tau. And then you obtain, so this is just some calculations, okay? Finally, you obtain this inequality, okay? So here is uh, this technique with uh, multipliers to show the uh, 
here is not x is uh, zero. So uh, here is the way you can prove the uh, observability inequality using multipliers. So in general, this technique of multipliers is used for hyperbolic equations and you can use, I'm going to write here, even if I had not started with the heat equation. Okay, so these multiplier techniques is used with, with um, for example, the wave equation. or plate equation. So uh, it's a way to prove the exact controllability again using the adjoint, okay, and uh, the observability inequality that says that uh, some functional is surjective, okay? And then we have the controllability. So now I am going to start with um uh, with the heat equation okay so here you are going to see that the situation is very different from the one with the transport equation so we are going to have started having problems so for the transport equation we get so transport equation we have exact controllability but we need t being large than l so we have a, a time large enough So we need time to be large enough for the transport equation, but we have exact controllability. And also we have that in the case of the transport equation, we have that exact controllability if and only if we have Null controllability. Or control to zero. Okay, it's the same. Well, so we're going to see that this is not longer happening with the heat equation. Okay. So I am going to start with uh, some problems with the heat equation, one dimensional setting. I am going to consider an internal control. So also this is called a distributed control. So here I am in the interval zero pi just to do things easiest, but you can consider zero L or, okay. And I am acting on a small set on this uh, interval zero L. So my control has a support here. So I am just acting in this part of the uh, 
zero pi interval, okay? So I will consider the heat equation. So this, I have uh, one derivative in time and two derivative in space. In, uh, I am consider boundary conditions equal to zero, okay? At x equal to zero and pi equal to zero. And uh, I have an initial datum that is a, 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 a function y dot that belongs to L2 of zero pi, okay? So uh, again, uh, well, here I need to study the, um, the, the space of solutions. So I have an initial datum in L0 of um, zero pi, okay? And I want to control with a control that also belongs to L2. We know, you can see, I don't know, many books where you have that the solution is continuous from zero T to L2 and uh, belongs to L2 of zero T to uh, H1 zero of zero pi. Okay, so since we are in the one dimensional situation and the boundary conditions are uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions. So we want the solution to be zero at zero and to be zero at pi. We can write down the solution in the Fourier series. So I'm going to use that because it's much more easy to do things using the Fourier series corresponding to the solution. So you have that your initial datum, you can write it like that, okay? So is a sinus of Nx because of the Dirichlet boundary conditions and Y0n are the Fourier coefficients that you can estimate just taking the inner product of your initial condition with the basis of uh, the Dirichlet Laplacian, okay? And also you can write down the uh, Fourier series corresponding to your control H that now is a function of T. Having that in mind, you can explicitly estimate or write down the Fourier series of your solution. So you have y of t x equal to this series. And because you have to solve uh, a series of ordinary differential equations and you can estimate the solution this way and everything is possible to be written down, okay? So again, we have the, the same question as we had for the ODE and for the transport equation. So is it possible to control exactly the heat equation? So what is the, this question? question? If I have an initial datum and a final datum. Recall that the solution was continuous from zero T to L2 of zero pi, okay? So if you have an initial datum there and a final data at the same space, so the question if, is if it exists an H such that the corresponding solution, so we can define Y as capital T, 
is equal to y1. So this is one question we may ask. Well, the answer is that in general, no, you cannot do that. So since, since the heat equation is not exactly controlled. And why do we have that? Okay, this is because the heat equation has what is called a regularizing effect. So that means that we, you start at a bad initial data and just a, an instant after that, your solution is much more regular, okay? Even if you can start with a direct delta, a very, very bad initial datum, mean, instant after that, you have uh, a much better solution. So I will try to explain that when I act, not only in this small set, but in all the interval. So I, I am given, uh, in some sense, a better situation, okay? So uh, I'm going to act on all the interval. And I want to study, so now I introduce a new concept, is the concept of reachable states when I am, I am acting with H. From zero, so now I am taking an initial data equal to zero, okay? And I will define the reachable states from zero are the solutions at time keep at capital T that depend on the control. So for each control, I uh, define the solution Y at capital T that starts from zero, okay? And I consider all the sets generated by H, okay? So I move H, I have one Y, of capital T, T is fixed. Then I use another H, I have another. So the reachable states are all the sets, all the set when I move H, okay? So I want to describe that set, okay? So I told you, I can't write down the, uh, Fourier series of uh, the solution, and you can compute it explicitly, okay? Here you have uh, your um, coefficients hk of h is nl2, so I can estimate that. And you can see that, uh, so the coefficients are like that. So you can see that your solution at time capital T is precisely in this way. And you can estimate that. So just estimate this integral, okay, you see, you get that, okay? And what does that imply? That implies because H is an L2, so this is integrable. So what you have is that K square, Y cap capital T square is less than infinity. So this is a characterization of the space H10 in, uh, how do you say, using a Fourier series of it. So you have K squared, so K goes to infinity. So this is a much more regular uh, space than 
the one I started. I started with L2, and now I have that k squares y k of t square belongs to L2, small L2. So this is, that means that y of capital T h belongs to h10. So you are in a much more regular space. So you cannot reach exactly a function that is in L2, okay? So this space is contained in L2 of zero P, but they are not the same space. So I cannot reach any, every state in L2 of zero P, okay? And you can proceed in this way and the function is continuous from zero T to L2. It is not continuous from zero T to H1. So you have difficulties here, okay? So the question is, can I get at least to zero? Why zero? Why? Because zero is stable. So as I said, you can leave the room if you have the solution to zero. You don't have to do anything more, okay? So in fact, when I am acting in the whole interval, it's not difficult to uh, explicitly uh, construct a solution that drives to zero your initial data. Okay. To do that, you have to construct a function eta that depends on time only, that is going to be one it at t equal to zero. So here is zero and is zero in a, in a neighborhood of capital T, okay? So it's one, so it's a function that goes from zero, from one to zero at capital T, okay? So given an initial datum L, Y zero in L2, we consider a solution Z that starts of y zero and solves the heat equations. So here is the heat equation with boundary conditions. So these are the boundary conditions and that's all, okay? But this is not my solution I want to, to go to zero. This is a solution of the heat equation. I am not acting on this equation, okay? So what I am going to do is to construct an explicit solution of my problem. I want to go from zero, from Y zero to zero, okay? Acting with a control H with support in all the intervals zero P, okay? Pi, that is my objective. Okay, so I had this, solution of the heat equation. I multiply this solution by my function eta that remember that eta was like that. So, but was one at t equals zero and was zero here, no? At, at capital T. Zero at capital T. So, what do we have? Of course, y of uh, x zero, eta of zero is one, so is y zero of x, that we have the initial condition, okay? The boundary conditions are the same because I am not modifying the solution z at zero or at pi. So we have the boundary conditions. And then we have, we put this on the heat equation. And what do you have? Okay, eta 
do not depend on X. So the derivatives are zero. But um, et, eta depends on T. So you have that you solve your heat equation, non-homogeneous, okay? And H is what is the eta prime of T times Z, the solution of the heat equation. So what do we have? Since eta of capital T is equal to zero, we have a null control. So H is a null control to the heat equation. But we are acting on the whole interval zero pi. So in general, uh, in, in general situations, you can do this kind of argument. If you want to act in the whole interval or in the whole domain, okay? The problem is that in general, Okay, see, so if you are trying to do um, a, a, a control, a solve a control problem coming from a real situation, it is very expensive to act in the whole domain, or you cannot do it. No, imagine a pollution problem in a river, you cannot act in the whole river. You can act maybe locally in some part, putting some kind of uh, chemical or, or that in a point in the river. So in general, you cannot act everywhere, okay? So this argument where you are constructing an explicit control because here is more or less explicit you can do it sometimes if you act everywhere so uh, this problem is not uh, very interesting so okay we have shown that for the heat equation you don't do not have exact controllability because of the regularizing effect of the heat equation if you act everywhere in the spatial domain, you can reach zero. So now we are going to ask another question. So is it possible to control approximately the heat equation? What does that mean? Okay, maybe I cannot go exactly from y zero we have, I cannot go to Y1 precisely. But in general, so in practice, in fact, uh, we don't need that. So we need to go close enough to Y1. So that means that for every epsilon, can we go close to my target? So that is going to be approximately controllable. In other words, I can reformulate this uh, approximate controllability saying that the reachable set, okay, starting from Y0 at time capital T, is dense in L2 of zero pi. pi. Again, I am acting with controls in H2 and L2 of zero T times little omega. Here, yes, I am considering uh, that the support of my control is a small uh, set of zero pi. Okay, so I move my controls and I consider the reachable set Y of capital T. 
there. So is this set dense? That is a new question, okay? This is a different situation than before. So this is a better drawing, okay? Okay, so again, we are going to the adjoint system. So in this situation, the adjoint system is this one. So recall that the heat equation was like that. Here I have my control and I have a different sign, okay? So this is correct because I am starting at ca time capital T. So the adjoint system is backwards in time. So for capital T, I go to zero, okay? So this is the adjoint equation. This is well posed. In fact, if you do a uh, change of variables, W of T equal to V of capital T minus T, you get a usual uh, heat equation starting at T equal to zero. And here we have to put the, uh, the datum a capital T. If I put here zero, is uh, ill posed. It's a, an equation that it is ill posed. So we have to put, be careful, put here capital T because we have this plus sign inside the equation. So now I'm going to uh, prove, and uh, this is the last thing I'm going to do today, is that our system i know is uh, is going to be approximately controllable at time capital t if we have a unique continuation property remember in the ode case i had a unique continuation property but this unique continuation property was equivalent to the exact controllability, but not now. Now, this unique continuation property that is more or less uh, similar to the case of uh, ODE, uh, do not imply exact controllability. So I'm going to uh, show that this unique continuation property implies the approximate controllability of the heat equation. Okay, so what is the um, approximate, uh, the unique continuation property? Well, we will have that if the solution to the heat equation vanishes in, you have zero, L, you have my little set omega vanishes in this set, in this uh, omega times zero T, then the solution is zero everywhere. In fact, the initial condition was zero, okay? Uh, okay, this is, not so easy to prove this unique continuation property. Uh, in the case of the one dimensional setting, we are going to see the proof. So I will start with that next Friday. Okay. Proving the unique continuation property in the one dimensional setting in general is not so easy. Okay. Uh, but what I'm going to show now is that this unique continuation property implies the approximate controllability of my heat equation. So that means that, 
Okay, so remember that uh, the uh, approximate controllability is equivalent to the density of the reachable states, no? So what we need to prove is that if I have the unique pro continuation property, this set is dense, okay? So we need to prove the density of this set. So remember that uh, Hambanach theorem says that a set is dense in a, in a subspace of a Banach space if the only element to the orthogonal is zero. That is, if I don't have an element orthogonal, orthogonal to the set. Okay, so I am going to prove that the reachable set of zero is uh, uh, dense in L2, okay? Why zero? Okay, because if I have approximate controllability from zero, that is starting from zero, I will have approximate controllability from any uh, initial data. Why? Because of the linearity of my system. So you, you just have to add if uh, things, maybe I can, I can do it in a moment, okay. So I, I'm going to show you that uh, uh, the only orthogonal uh, to the reachable set starting from zero is zero, okay? But I, I, I'm to show that the, the, this reachable set is um, dense. Okay, so I am assuming by contradiction that um, we have that uh, an element orthogonal to the reachable uh, set different from zero. And I take V, the corresponding solution to the adjoint equation. That means that I have Vx, Vt plus Vx, x equal to zero. V is zero in the boundary of V of capital T, x is equal to Vt, okay? Vt precisely this orthogonal to the reachable set. Okay, and I am starting from zero. So for the heat equation, I have y x x equal to h characteristic of zero set omega, y in the boundary is zero, and y of zero is equal to zero. Okay, so if I multiply y var by v. Or, or V by Y, I see that I have this identity integrating by parts, okay? So I will have, because Y of zero is zero, I just have that. I am assuming that VT is orthogonal to the reachable set. So that means that this is equal to zero for every h. So I have that this is equal to zero for every h. So if I, if I have that, that means that if this happens 
for every H in L2 of zero T cross the, the little set omega, I will have that V is equal to zero almost everywhere in the time interval times zero pi. So I am having zero pi here, dear, here is a small set omega, and I am having that. Since I am assuming that the unique continuation is true, we get that Vt is equal to zero. So I am saying that the only point orthogonal to all the reachable set is V of T equal to zero. So that means precisely that R of zero T is dense in L2. Okay. So I think I will finish for today and I will conclude next day with a proof of this unique continuation property uh, for the heat equation in the one dimensional case. And okay, I will talk about some other results in the, for the heat equation. So that's all for today.